Well, hi, everybody. We're here again with Com Talk, and we have a special guest again, uh, Peter Cimarroni. This is a very unique uh, version of this. It is going to be called Stories, and we're going to talk about Peter Cimarroni and his his journey and some of the business he's done, and yeah. and tell us about some of these stories. I, we we want to know about first of all one of your big ones. Yeah. What well, was that? I'll tell, tell you what. About yeah, it, you know, back in 1998, yeah. I was at my actually it was 1996, mm-hmm. okay? I was at my sister's house. Yeah. And my brother-in-law who's an OBGYN, last sadly we lost him in 2018. Mm-hmm. Beautiful guy. Unbelievable. Yeah. Delivered 7,000 babies. I mean, amazing wow. guy. Uh, wow. he was a commander in the uh, uh, navy as well. Really? Uh, yeah. So, anyhow, uh, he's holding a lozenge, like a Ludens or something, in his daughter's mouth. Okay? <laughs> and the daughter's like three years old. Yeah. And she's sucking on it. Yeah. You know, she's just, yeah. I, like, I looked at him, I go, what are you doing? You know what I mean? He goes, well, I don't want her to aspirate. So I'm holding it in her mouth to make sure she doesn't suck too hard and go down the wrong pipe. Right. I said, there's got to be a better way. And my sister pipes up. She goes, yeah, let's put it on a stick. Bing. Bingo, cough pops, <laughs> cough drop on a stick. You invented that. Brother-in-law, sister, and me invented that in 1996. Wow. That's incredible. In 1998, we got it to the market, a year and a half almost later. And before you knew it, we were in all 50 states, every major retail. I remember going out to Vegas, to oh, Utah, man. walking into a CVS, and there's our product. Wow. We were on every cover of every major magazine. This is, you know... Pre, pretty much pre-internet-ish. Yeah. Um, we had a website, you know, but whatever. And uh, we were on TV shows. I remember being interviewed by the health reporter in yeah. Columbus yeah. on the NBC O&O station. It was owned and operated. We were on 70 stations immediately. Wow. I was getting calls from Seattle, Washington, buddy of mine. Said, I just saw you on, you know, the local NBC station. Well, it wasn't local because it was an, uh, it was an uh, NBC-owned station. Yeah. It wasn't a franchise, yeah. you know. So it just exploded and before you knew it we were a multi-million dollar company and then we ended up selling in 2006 so So. the the big question i have and our audience has is anybody listening you know there's that step in there everybody has three to ten great ideas every day and they don't do anything with them right yeah yeah what possessed you to go that extra mile yeah i mean because there's fear obviously with everybody you know i don't want to do it i'm afraid how do you, how'd you get and that? I'll tell you what happened, why, why that occurred, yeah. why I took that step. Because I tried it in 1991 when my, my, first, my first wife, my ex-wife, mm-hmm. was, I, had, I was a wrestling coach mm-hmm. and I was constantly getting my back, my scapula tweaked. Yeah. I would get like these cramps, mm-hmm. you know, these, these spasms. Yeah. So she would get this thing, it looked like a little egg yeah. and, it was, and it, was a, 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 it was a massager that was pinpoint yeah. okay and she would rub it out for me right yeah well we had just had our first child and yeah. he was teething and guess what he did he picked that up put it through his mouth and was eradicating teething pain i went oh. to my buddy who was a dentist and he's my dentist yeah and i said what do we got here he goes oh yeah that's called the pain the the gate theory of pain mm-hmm. eradication hmm. it was the first non-invasive form of teething pain eradication on the planet, we invented the pacif- vibrating pacifier teether. I have a patent on it. Okay, <laughs> wow. I have a patent on it. So you were all excited. You I was all this, excited. Yeah. We went to Fisher Price. They were going to make blah blah blah. All these other. All of a sudden, China, yeah, ripped us off, ripped our patent off, and came in with a competing pro- a product that undercut us price wise. Uh. So I learned a very valuable lesson of a CPG product. Mm-hmm. I said, we're not going to have. So what we did was with cough pops, we got distribution because we, we were going to go with a pharmaceutical. No way. It would have taken five years to get to market. We went with a thing called a nutraceutical, which was brand new at the time. Mm-hmm. And all it had in it was chelated zinc and ascorbic acid, vitamin C. Wow. And we got to the market like that. And before we caught everybody sleeping, we, ca- we created the category. And Dimatap, Came out with a competing product called Get Better Bear, and we ended up buying them up. Wow. Yeah. yeah so the yeah. whole key is you kind of kept it on the down low with the public. Until right? it was time not to, and then we went with a massive PR campaign, which I was telling you about, and that's why I was on the cover of Cranes. I was on the cover wow. with my brother-in-law. 
Plain Dealer, Chicago Tribune, Wall Street Journal, Advertising wow. Age. We were everywhere. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yep. That's so cool. So that yep. was a huge feather in your cap. And exactly a big, right. Big deal. Exactly wow. right. Amazing. So your segue beyond that, yeah. then what? Yeah. You, then you started your own company. We took those, that same that same modality, same methodology, yeah. same platform mm-hmm. to the market, and we started creating some of these great, iconic campaigns. We did Tickner's, Metro Lexus, you know, Metro Health, uh, I mean, uh, Myers College. We ended up, you know, doing a lot of these big names. Okay, that ended up doing really, really well. And then I started to morph it into a best practices because I knew what to do line item wise too. I had to create a very efficient, high margin, you know, margin profit mm-hmm. company. And I knew that it wasn't just top line growth because yeah. everything when you sell is valuation. When right. you look to when you look to exit, it's a body EBITDA. So we created literally a virtual company. Okay, we we just we just co partnered with other vendors and that's what we're doing right now same thing so when i when i go in to look at a company i find out what's right with it with 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 what is right with it what is not right with it where do they want to be and why and how fast and we get them there it could be a simple one a la carte solution some type of a hybrid um, plan if you will or a full-blown strategic master plan to get them to that exit strategy and there's a ton of manufacturing businesses right now Dan, mm-hmm. there are 700 companies here in town that are manufacturing that have no transition, have no perpetuation plan. Yeah, yeah, I believe And they're that. all over 60. Oh. All the owners are over 60 and mostly Welcome male. to the club. Yeah, and, and, oh, yeah. <laughs> We're all the uh, same. That's, a long, that's long in my rearview mirror. Dear God, that's well, almost Well, you have seven such years. a wealth of experience yeah. in this. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I see companies could really appreciate it and gravitate to it. You know, I'm seeing that more and more, that they're right. gravitating to small groups that have high experience. Sure. And that's really the key, I think, yeah. behind, you know. But they got to listen, too. They got to listen. You know what I mean? Like, you I, know? you know, I just recently had a client that did really, really well and mm-hmm. listened to me, but then didn't think that I helped him do that. It's sort of weird. It's a weird dynamic, too. You got yeah. to you got to check your ego at yeah. the door. You know what I mean? That's and so. Thing. And and I was just I was just talking to a, a, another another gentleman about a, com- a a campaign I ran for a guy who ran for mayor, who listened to me initially and did very well and then didn't listen to me and then lost the campaign. And I'm like, I, I don't get it. You know what I mean? It's so weird. It's like I'm going to get you a state championship as a freshman and then you don't listen to me and then you never even make the state tournament by the time you're a junior. You know because yeah. you're not listening. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just a weird dynamic. But. Eh. It is hap- It is what it is. It's you get guys nature. like that. Yeah, get, exactly. You know. But all that, all the, you know, I've owned nine businesses, mm-hmm. okay? I succeeded in six. I failed in three. I've learned more in the failures of particularly what not to do, what yeah. not to surround yourself with, with, how not to structure stuff than I did in the successes. Yeah. And that saves you time, money, and heartache. Oh, yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah. And so right now we're bringing that all together for my food company. Yeah, tell us about that. When I heard about that, I was like, wow, you're doing that too? Yeah, exactly <laughs> so, right. So exactly tell right. us what the name of that is. Well, you've tasted the product. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. That's, yeah. It yeah. yeah. worked perfectly exactly when right. you brought it in. I'm yeah. like, I'm sold. <laughs> okay. So it's a guacamole company. Yeah. Okay. And why guacamole? Well, about five years ago, I started to date my now beautiful wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we started to do these Sunday fun days. And there was a restaurant on the east side that sadly just closed called Paladar, which is a Cuban restaurant. Mm -hmm. And it had a three-sampler guacamole plate, okay? So it had their traditional guacamole, then had their takes on, you know, they had one with bacon, one with just whatever. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, I said, you know, this is pretty good, because I was really never a guac eater. It's pretty good. And then I went home, I said, I don't know why, but I think I can make it better. And I'm telling you, I'm not a chef. I'm, I mean, I'm a good, you know, I can cook, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, my first my first marriage, I was married to a wife who was, was literally a gourmet chef. She oh, runs wow. a kitchen for one of the top, especially food stores yeah. on the east side. Anyhow, I started to do it and it was off the charts good. Well, you've tasted oh, it. Oh, it's amazing. Okay, it's yeah. amazing, right? Yeah. And so all of a sudden I become, you know, I, I, I found that I'm this world-class guac maker. <laughs> right. So I started to bring it to parties. And had the same, you know, uh, same experience there, and to the point where I knew I had something was when my baby brother took the bowl and took a spoon and finished a third of the bowl with a spoon. <laughs> 
I yeah. said, okay, I, I'm, I may not be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I think I got something yeah, here. Yeah. So about a year and a half ago, I, I reached out to the, literally the special forces, mm-hmm. uh, guys that I know. You met Dennis Dunn, who's brilliant. Yeah. He's a former uh, Shears and Pepsi guy. Uh, I've got a Stacy Reed, who's an unbelievable. She's the brainchild behind um, Cleveland Ketchup. Kyle Obendorf, my chief marketing officer, unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Kyle Franz, great in, in finance. And David Safanovitz, who's my Jewish Luca Brazzi. Yeah. <laughs> He's my guy. <laughs> He's, He's my guy. And that's my team. Yeah. And uh, we also have great partners in our manufacturer in Mexico, our brokers here locally. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just amazing. And we're getting good response uh, from the retailers and our um we have been told by our broker network that we are going to be in stores in May. Perfect. Yeah. What's the name of your? Uh, it's product? called Avocado Goodness, Avocado and it's Goodness. the Gigi's brand, and Gigi stands for gourmet guac. Wow. Yeah. Very so, cool. Yeah. So we're gonna have we're gonna start with two different uh, skews. One is obviously our take on guac, and the other is a breakfast, brunch, spread, dinner, uh, you know, side dish topping. And essentially what that is, is our guac without cilantro because Mm -hmm. about 5% of the population has an aversion to the taste of cilantro. It tastes like soap to them. So we want a product that is going to be good for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody's going to ask the same question again. Sure. You know, my wife makes fantastic spaghetti. Right. Why can't she do this? Why do we always get stuck here? And to me, looking from the outside in, you seem to be addicted to success. Okay. And not just success, but taking it past that first step to uncomfortable. Yes. Right? Yes. And that's very few people do that. Well, let me ask you a question. Would you like to talk to almost 200 people and 198 of them say no to you and literally tell you you're sort of an idiot? Yeah. That's, that's my superpower. Right, he, he, you put those blinders on. You just you have you, to. well, it's it's just like you're gonna knock me in the head. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go harder. Yeah, I'm gonna go harder. Yeah. And that's your probably uh, yeah. wrestling background. Ex- ex- well, it, and I think that was just innate with me. Just wrestling had happened to be the vehicle. Yeah, right. I love football too. I mean, as a center on the football team at five seven, 150 pounds back in the Stone Age, but I loved it. I yeah. loved the knocking of the head, and. And being knocked down and getting back up and hitting hard, yeah. right? Yeah. And so it's the tenacity. Right. It's the, uh, and you know, somebody asked me, actually a few people asked me, well, what happens if this doesn't happen? I go, there's only one thing that will stop me from having this happen, and that's the grave. Yeah, right. There is no plan B for this. Right, yeah. It's the grave. So this will and is happening. Love it. Love it. You know? And so, you know, you can get a little touchy-feely, too. And my future is already, I already see my future. I'm living my future. I'm just yeah. waiting for it to catch up to the present. Right, right. Outstanding. You know? Outstanding. Yeah. Well, that's some great gems you dropped today, dude. Thank you, bro. Fantastic. Thank you, bro. Well, uh, how can people reach you, Peter? On all the ends of things. Absolutely. Well, call me. <laughs> call me. 216-287-1522. We'll have it in the notes, guys. Right. Um, and my two companies are... PalladiumEdge.com, Peter at PalladiumEdge.com, or AvoGo.co, Peter at AvoGo.co, not, not com, dot .co. Thank you, Kyle Obendorf, for that, uh, that contemporary <laughs> uh, website and, and web address. And um, we are, again, slated to be on shelves in, uh, in May. Awesome. Can't wait to eat it. Yeah. I need it. Yeah. Well, so. you, you always got a free, <laughs> oh, I free, really appreciate free it. samples. Absolutely. You and Eddie. My awesome. boy, Eddie. Eddie. I love Eddie. Eddie. Cameras over there. Love Eddie. And Alex, too. Alex, Alex too. too. My son, Alex, loves yeah, that stuff. Absolutely. He was, nut. that smile on his face when he ate it mel- melted my heart. Oh, he's man. great. He's, he's great. A great. Great kid. So good. Yeah. Well, thanks, everybody, for uh, tuning in today. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Com Talk.